Well, let's talk about it. All so right. this is batteries encased in diamonds. They use nuclear waste to power devices for thousands of years on a single charge. And this is no joke. Let that sink in, sink in for a second. Now, there's a few people in chat that were saying it's totally bunk. It's not true. I, I think it's true. Well, let's go deeper from, because from it seems like... From all the stuff... Right. You and I were both digging. This you, is from yesterday. This, this is from... Well, th yeah, August 31st. So a few oh. days ago, Monday. Oh, I see. Updated yesterday. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, updated yesterday. All right. Well, whatever. Was, this is from two days ago. All right. So this is brand new stuff like they're making leaps and bounds which makes sense if you look at technology over the past hundred years we make crazy advancements so let's let's read this it says a new uh, well I'll just read into it. it says imagine a cell phone that you never that never needs to be recharged or a car battery that lasts long enough your grandchildren can use it the claim comes from California based startup that says it's cleared significant hurdles in its goal to develop a battery that can last 28,000 years without ever needing a charge. The Nano Diamond Battery, NDB, Inc., is powered by nuclear waste, but its radioactive core is protected by multiple layers of synthetic diamonds, one of the strongest materials on Earth. So scientists say the batteries emit less radioactivity than the human body and is safe to use in cars, planes, phones, and even pacemakers. And here's a little, I think it's just a concept video that you can see. It's That's a double-A battery. A lifelong-lasting double-A battery. All right, let's keep reading into it. Let's see. Let's see, what is this? It says, it's a nano, its nano battery could last 28,000 years without ever needing a charge. It's made from carbon-14, a radioactive isotope generated in nuclear power plants. But it's shielded by layers and layers of thin synthetic diamonds, one of the hardest substances on Earth. On August 25th, NDB announced it had completed two proof-of-concept tests at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory of Calif in California and Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge University. In the lab, the battery achieved a 40% charge, a significant improvement over solar power, which typically produces uh, only 15-20% to 20 charge. NDB believes it will be able to reach a 90% rate of charge, its battery is powered by carbon-14, a radioactive isotope generated in the graphite, graphite blocks used to moderate reactions in nuclear power plants. The carbon-14 is extracted and turned into tiny carbon-14 diamonds that collect and emit a charge. They're then shielded with multiple layers of synthetic diamond, one of the hardest materials on Earth. The energy from the isotope is absorbed in the diamond through a process of um, inelastic scattering which is used to generate electricity. Any excess charge will be stored in the secondary ch charge storage, NBD set, such as capacitors, supercapacitors, and secondary cells. Carbon-14 emits short-range radiation that is quickly absorbed by any solid material. It's dangerous to ingest or touch with your bare hands, but encased within a nano diamond, it would not leak. Interesting. So this, this is really long, this article. Oh, I guess it's not. No, no, it's it's almost over. I guess I'll just read this whole article and then we'll we'll get into the the stuff that you yeah. you found out. Uh, so it said it's got the twenty eight thousand years lifespan. That's crazy. Carbon fourteen has a half life, the time it takes for the radioactivity to fade, um, to half of its initial potency of five thousand seven hundred thirty years. So a battery built in twenty sixteen could run on full power until the year seven thousand seven hundred forty six. That's nuts. After that, its effect uh, effectiveness would depend on the needs of the device it was powering, which could range from hearing aids to an orbital satellite. Of course, I feel like we would make significant advancements in battery power by the time uh, 7,746 CE came about. I think so. <laughs> so that's it's pretty crazy. Uh, imagine a world where you would, wouldn't have to charge your phone at all. That's... That, that day is almost here. That's that's what this is from Neil Nake, Naker from the New Atlas. And this is actually, well, I'll let you take over here. Right. So this is the article that you were reading. Yeah, this is the, um, an interview with the team, the NDB team, which is the Nanodyne Battery Team, the okay. name of their company. And um, let's, let's what, what kind of jump here? in. So the interviewer was asking the team some questions and then they were uh, responding. So let's start, I'll, I'll kind of read along with what they were asking and responding. So they're asking where they get the carbon. 
Um, and the team responded that basically they're using a range of different isotopes, the carbon-14 they were talking about, not just one, but they get access through different mes uh, methods. So we have some partners in collaboration at the moment that can provide them. And uh, it comes from nuclear waste. And the waste is, actually, I'll bring up the picture. Is that this Third one, one here? This one here? One more. There, there it is. Go. This is a picture of a nuclear reactor. And when they say that they're getting it from the graphite, um, the rods are in here, and then the graphite is uh, encased around it. So they get bombarded with radioactivity, this graphite, and then eventually they have to dispose of it. And that's a big part of nuclear waste in our culture. Yeah. Um, they stopped using lead and they started using this graphite. But instead, they can put this, they can crush this graphite into diamonds. I'm not sure if they crush it or how they transmute it into diamonds. And then put another layer of synthetic carbon or uh, diamond around that to re receive alpha and beta wave particles that cause a charge in the diamond. Hmm. Cool. Um, so I think I just explained that. Uh, and then they're asking about 28,000 years. He wanted to just specify that it depends on what you're going to charge. Like certain things would be, he says here, when it comes to something like consumer electronics, it'd be more like nine years on one charge um, in some small That's sensors. So yeah, 28,000 years on like little sensors. Yeah, that was, that was one thing that uh, came up a lot. And yesterday we had a uh, Sparky kept, super chat and all, all about this saying you know a lot of the times the charge isn't strong enough now what we're finding out it feels like that's kind of uh, outdated information because they're figuring out how to make more and more charges like as we as the other article said that they're making steps towards um what was it it was just a it was a 40 percent charge which was significantly better over solar power which produced a 15 to 20 percent charge and they, they think that they can reach up to 90% charge on, on these batteries. So, I mean, the, the future is coming. Right. And this is the craziest part. This is from 1954. This is an experimental RCA atomic battery. And essentially, it's the same kind of device. All right. This is, they actually made a prototype of the atomic battery. And this is... Actually, at the time, they used uh, strontium-8. I don't remember exactly what kind of radioactive material that they, they chose, but it was very lethal, you know, so it wasn't... It was very... 1954, they were just discovering all these radioactivity stuff using, you know, nuclear energy, but they were uh, they were way ahead of their time. This is in 1954 when they had this, this battery, and they were like, oh, man, they even said, this is the... This is bigger than the telephone if, if this works. And honestly, if it works, they're right. Yeah. This is huge. If we can make a battery, we were talking the other day about engines and how nuclear energy, it's not nuclear energy. It's just steam energy. Yeah. That they're using the, the heat source to make steam yeah. to do steam engines. So we're still using this energy about you know a old 100 year to i don't remember when the first steam engine came about but 18 something yeah you know over 100 years ago easy right so yeah. so this all the technology that we're using is all outdated so if this battery system works if it just produces energy for thousands of years we don't need a we don't need an, an engine right it's, and it's it nuclear waste it, and it's nuclear waste too not only is it something amazing we could take this waste that we've created and use it to make future energy so we can all of our waste turns into the new power and they're saying it's like the the actual radioactive stuff is pretty toxic but because it's in diamond yeah it's like it's like having a battery that's made of diamond so if you drop a cement brick on it mm -hmm. the cement brick will break yeah and the diamond will remain because it's 10 times stronger than steel so even even better dr neil fox from the School of Chemistry explained, carbon-14 was chosen as a source material because it emits short-range radiation, which is quickly absorbed by any solid material. That would make it dangerous to ingest or touch with your naked skin, but safe, held safely within diamond, um, it would be fine. No short-range radiation can escape. In fact, diamond is the hardest substance known to man. There is literally nothing we can do to offer more protection. And in a, in a further interview that he was talking about, the diamond itself is what's radioactive, but because it um, it hits on solid 
um, yeah, what am I trying synthetic to find? diamond around it? Well, they don't even need to surround it. What he was explaining is that the diamond that they create in itself is giving the charge and protecting the radiation from getting out oh, okay. because it itself is the diamond. So it's the capacitor and the it's yeah, all of it like in it. one little thing in like one diamond. Like we can actually have these like diamonds, Dude. obviously not this big. I feel like this is quite well, a, you quite could, a large diamond. You could probably make it that big. But they were saying you can make car batteries <laughs> yeah. with it. So you imagine you wouldn't have to charge your car. You know, every but why, it wouldn't know. even be a battery. It would literally be everything. Right, the whole it engine redefines the, the power of. I like mean, batteries are little power sources, they're right. little generators, I guess. Well, they're like acid. Yeah, you know, I don't really know much about lithium-ion batteries, except right. but they're constantly producing a charge till they. Well, even Tesla cars, they are. It's not like one big battery. You know, if you open up all the batteries, they're all little tiny batteries lined up, brrr, just thousands of them into these bigger battery packs. Or at least that's how it was a couple years ago when I when I discovered that. So you know advancements have have made we've leaps and bounds you wow. know so this is uh this is pretty crazy so then it kind of leads me into this other thing now it's this is this is a little i it goes hand in hand but this is really cool so someone pointed this out to me the other day a mysterious tesla tower erected in texas all right so we did a deep dive on nikola tesla a while ago months ago April, I think. And so this is this is from November 2018. So this is a little a little while ago, but it's really interesting. They're talking about the Wardenclyffe Tower, which is was in uh, Long Island, New York. He ran out of funding. But I, I don't want to talk about Tesla. I want to talk about this new tower that they found in Mid Milford, Texas. Tiny town, a population of 747 people. Really tiny. North Texas, central North Texas. And this strange tower. Oh, let's see. It's got a picture of it here. I haven't seen this, but oh, all right. Oh. So, oh, okay. So this is it. Oh yeah. Now I was like, what is this thing, right? And I was reading into this company. This company here, Viz Visive Technologies, striving to power the planet through innovation. And I was like, oh, this sounds this sounds really interesting. And I scroll down, and sure enough boom oh there's the tower that they were referring to and what over here it says the evolution of wireless power and signaling that's literally what tesla was trying to do he was trying to give wireless power to the world so are we seeing this i think so are you seeing what i'm seeing i'm looking at it and yes uh this looks like what tesla was trying to do he was literally trying to send energy through the air and it's pretty incredible and through the ground, right? And through the ground, yeah. Through the Tulare... Well, it's it's to collect the Tulare current and then send it out wirelessly. So he figured oh. it out. So this is this is incredible. So I following the science, you click on that, and they say, imagine what we can do with safe, reliable, and affordable wireless power. Improving lives. Wireless power technology means hot meals, clean drinking water, advanced medical treatment, and greater access to educational resources for almost a billion people globally without power. And it says, as, as of 2017, only 52% of people living in Africa have electricity. Only 52%. That's crazy. I mean, this was three years ago. A lot of still. people are using kerosene, which is one of the most dangerous really? uh, toxic. Because like, they need reading light, so they have kerosene lamps. And uh, they'll, it, it, it's like a huge cause of death. I mean, oh, it's wow. like, I don't know how many, 100 million people are using kerosene. Wow. The fumes are I really don't know bad. Either. Yeah, it's but then it says 168 million people in India have no access to electricity. And then we got... Uh, uh, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. 620,000 households were without power. Ten days after the 2011 uh, Japanese tsunami, 600,000 customers without electric power. So this is this would be them going in, maybe uh, erecting, oh, setting up a tower, maybe bringing this tower and being like, "Boom, you all got power." All right. But then again, this is why Tesla got shut down. Man, Tesla was ahead of his time. Yeah, really. I mean, we knew that already, but now we're we're we got these batteries that are, you know. I'm so Perpetual glad that they batteries. didn't shut down radio, man. I know. That's that a good was point. world changing. Well, if you think about it, radio, it was very similar. It's just it's so the audio similar, yeah. instead of the power being sent out. But he wasn't like thing. undoing any industry with radio, so right. they didn't care to, to uh, stop him. I don't think. I mean, it seemed to just enhance industry. It didn't really like take anything away from anyone. So this is exciting, man. I am excited about this. It's just like they're protecting the planet. Like, look at this. 
According to the International Energy Agency, modern renewables account for 25% of electricity generation worldwide, yet only 10% of the final consumption. Understandably, a sizable portion of the difference between the consumption and the renewables involve the lack of delivery infrastructure. So they're talking about delivering wireless power in Africa, in India, in, in islands that have been hit, in Japan. Those that are talking about everywhere. So what I'm getting from that is this, this is doable anywhere on the planet. Anywhere. So we can, we can have wireless electric i mean look at this this light bulb let me see if i could i could pick it up look at that yes that's wireless energy right there there there's inductive energy being given to this light bulb that i could turn it on and off it's floating and there you go that that now it's can be scaled up and sent out to the world that's amazing with nuclear batteries man and then imagine dude well no we we wouldn't even need batteries if they're just sending out if we but can, they got to generate the electricity at the base station right i don't know how i don't know i i mean this is uh some they're not explaining how it does it Whoa, surface waves what's this all right so it says how surface waves deliver benefits so i don't know what surface waves is it says uh the ability to produce electric power from multiple wireless power companies effectively commoditizes electrons Prov uh, providing both national and international access to low cost electricity or electric power enabling power companies to and end user con customers to source electrical power from multiple generator sources such as nuclear gas hydro geothermal solar and wind increases the effective use of current resource base and unlocks the capacity of other standard resources okay so it seems like this is just the delivery system right doesn't matter where the power is coming from right so now scale that up, bring it together with those batteries. It's basically there's there's multiple breakthroughs. You can right have now. you can have a thing in your backpack that's got a couple diamond batteries in it, connected to one of these devices. So everything, charging your neighborhood. everything around you is just charged and just on. Right. Your computer. Yes. Just it's like a Wi-Fi Wi-Fi device. Instead of connecting to the internet, you're connecting to po a power source. Wow. Like, oh yeah, my power source. You know, I use the the new 2028 style N NDB battery. Like your phone charges everything around it. Or yeah, everyone's got a phone. That's true. That's a good point. Like, why couldn't we just have, uh, you know, a whole phone system that that works that way? It's pretty like short range, pretty incredible. wireless power transmission. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, dude, exciting stuff it's happening now. Tesla is is smiling right now. Yeah. Wherever he is, he's probably riding the electric waves of the yes. universe. I, <laughs> I don't know. You know, look, guys, I don't know if this all this stuff is just smoke. I, I want to believe it. I think there's some truth in this. I see a lot of chats like, whoa, this is, this is crazy far-fetched. It's like, you know what? Is it or is it something? Sci science fiction showed in 1954... There's a there's a comparison of a rocket landing coming down from Earth and landing and everyone was like that's the craziest most preposterous thing I've ever seen. Someone who says that that's going to be a possibility is crazy. Well, guess what? Elon Musk did it. He has reusable rockets that launch into space and then they self-adjust and land upright. That was 60 years ago. 66 years ago that that debuted in a movie and people freaked out and now it's actually happening so whatever i i, I right. this is really cool it's really exciting stuff and only few only the future will tell so we'll see